Hey, it's another great week to be a Wiley Bulldog. Welcome in, Bulldog fans, to another episode here of the Wiley Bulldog Sports Zone. We're talking Wiley Bulldog athletics here for the next 30 minutes. I'm Andy Penny along with the head football coach, Coach Clay Martin. The Bulldogs are 2-0 and on the young season. An impressive Thursday night victory last week versus the Lubbock Coronado Mustangs. 41-12 to the final in that one. We'll look back at that one. We'll get you ready for homecoming 2024 as Wiley plays host to the Stephenville Yellow Jackets uh, this coming Friday at Sanford Stadium. We'll look in at the other sports as well. We'll do all of that here in the next 30 minutes. Again, uh, glad to uh, be joined here by the head football coach here at Wiley High School, Coach Clay Martin. Coach, 2-0 and on the young season. Congrats on the uh, win. How are you feeling these days? Yeah, you know, I uh, feel like we've got off to a good start. I feel like we improved greatly from week one to week two. And, uh, you know, guys are working hard and uh, just have gone back to work ready for, for the next opponent. Yeah, we'll jump into the highlights here in a moment. For those of the, for those uh, people who haven't seen that, man, what a crazy start you had the other night as Coronado gets the football. You had uh, a turnover mixed in there and uh, before a uh, kickoff return for a touchdown. Before you know it, I think Coronado had run 20-plus plays. Your offense had barely been on the field, and, and you had a 7-6 to six lead at the end of the first quarter. How about that? It was kind of a unique start the other night. Yeah, it's as different as any I've ever seen. We'd <laughs> snapped it three times. One of those was an interception and uh, still led 7-6. to six. And, uh, you know, it made a lot of good defensive plays, a yeah. lot of negative plays, and um, just had, had given up, got, couldn't get off the field, and, um, you know, a couple of mistakes on special teams. Yeah, but boy, when all gets said and done, uh, you get that offense rolling 34 unanswered over the course of the last three quarters uh, to put that thing away. Just really, well, once you it felt like you got your footing the other night, everything just went the right direction. Yeah, those, those guys up front, we talk about that all the time, yep. but uh, did a great job, I think, on both sides of the ball, but, you know, especially those offensive linemen, I think, yep. really dominated the line of scrimmage, and uh, um, you know, and we were able to take advantage of that. So 41-12, to 12, the uh, final score the other night. Wiley uh, beats Coronado to move to 2-0. and 0. Coach, let's dive into those highlights now that we've uh, kind of previewed them. We'll dive into it again. Coronado gets the football to start, and your defense just uh, made made great plays all night long and started up front uh, with your front seven. Did a great job. Yeah, those guys uh, were able to penetrate throughout the game and, um, you know, some create some negative plays here. Ethan Hoffman with a run through and, uh, you know, a big tackle behind the line. And uh, really these front seven, uh, uh, Coronado wanted to do a lot of things. I felt like short, couldn't ha have an opportunity to do that. Jagan Smith gets a hand on a ball here. They're trying to stretch the field, and, and your defense just stretches it out and makes a play. Yeah, I thought we did a good job of running to the football, pursuing. Uh, the effort was great, and, um, you know, it lasted all night long. Coronado is able to get into the end zone 6 to nothing. We talk about the offense not getting on the field because your special teams unit, Riley Robinson, takes this one down the, down yeah. the far sideline to the house. Good execution of the return, uh, you know, had a body on a body and uh, guys just being very disciplined, not blocking in the back or holding and Riley did a great job. 87 yards, the first special teams touchdown of the uh, season for the Bulldogs and again they had a 7-6 to six lead. They go to work again here, busted play, but uh, great pursuit and your, your linebacking core makes a great play. Yeah, just guys running to the football all night long. So seven to six, uh, one more defensive play as Garrett Allison knocks the football down seven to six. Uh, still more defense coming here. Again, Garrett Allison off the defensive line makes another play. We finally uh, get the offense uh, on the field. It took a while, but uh, they go to work. Jake and Smith, a nice run to get things started. Yeah, great job hitting the hole. Great job up front. You know, we had to log the defensive end, the tight end. Read it and came around. Just a, a good play. And we get into the second quarter, and uh, we see one of your sophomores uh, make a name for himself. Back-to-back -back plays here by Dylan Regala. Yeah, a good hard run by Dylan. Was able to get to the edge, and, you know, then we froze him here and got him off sides. And, um, you know, uh, Dylan was able to get behind him and make a good catch. On the post pattern, sets you up down in the red zone, and uh, Jaden Lucero gets going. All three of your running backs had 70-plus yards. Jaden Smith, Jaden Lucero, Julius Lane, all 70-plus yards rushing. And we'll see another sophomore, Blake Frailing, get in the end zone. Yeah, great play design and, um, you know, by Coach Ming and offense and uh, just a little bootleg route. Blake did a good job getting in the end zone. Blake out from uh, eight yards out, his first touchdown of the year, gave the Bulldogs the lead. They would never relinquish. And then you uh, get a special teams turnover yourself here. Yeah, Noah did a great job. Uh, you know, several different types of kicks that we asked him to do throughout the night. And, um, just a great job there and got a lucky bounce. Coronado unable to uh, cover that up. You'll see Bear get out on the on the edge. But, boy, it's such a nice piece of your offense when Bear can get out and scramble, which he does there. He'll hit uh, Harrison Heighton out here uh, on the edge for a touchdown and get or uh, no, down inside the 10 and sets you up for a touchdown with Julius Lane. Yeah, you know, a good tough run by Julius. Uh, 
you know, were able to, to execute throughout the night. And, um, you know, it's, we talked about that being the key, and I thought we did a good job of it. So 20 to 12 at this point, two consecutive touchdowns. You get the ball here late in the first half, and you go to your single wing formation, and before you know it, you're down inside the red zone again. Yeah, Jagan just relentless running and, um, you know, was able to break free and just great effort. And then the uh, touchdown here, Bear, to uh, uh, Gage Heighton, his third touchdown of the year. Beautiful play design for the touchdown. Yeah, we had, that one was one we had put in and really worked on a, a little um, leverage type route and just very well executed. And the touchdown gives you a 27-12 lead. We get to halftime, and you get the football to start the second half. You go right back to work. It's Jaden, a, a, a long catch on the uh, far sideline and uh, down the field. Nice little slip screen here to Riley, too. Yeah, I did a good job those guys getting out front and uh, Riley able to find a hole and get it up the field. Running the football again here. And, and, and talk about the depth again of your running back position. Yeah, those guys, uh, you know, have been very unselfish. And, and when they get in there and have their opportunities, have, have taken advantage of that. And, you know, all three of them are quality backs and, and have done a great job for us. Jagan in from a yard out. It's 34 to 12 before we know it. Don't forget about this defense. Boy, they're uh, starting to pitch a shutout and, and just I really felt like you wore down Coronado there in the second half. They just could not get anything going offensively. Yeah, you know, we we, we continued to play aggressively and, um, you know, kind of got after them. And, and you know, I, I think that, that wears on a team when you just have relentless pursuit of the football. And, uh, you know, big play by Jordan Lockett, a great tackle there. Yeah, a big hit on the outside. And, again, I just thought your front seven played so well. Coronado just could not run the football between the tackles. They couldn't get out on the edges and uh, did just a fantastic job as you pitch a shutout in the second half. Coronado unable to score. Almost another interception <laughs> there for Hayden Wright, but Bo Cates gets a hand on it. And then, Coach, here just uh, nailing the coffin. You go 89 yards in three plays to get your final touchdown. Yeah, you know, a good play here and um, able to get a, a pass down the sideline. Once again, froze them and uh, was able to throw it. And Blaze Ruffin does a great job going up over the top and making a big play. Another sophomore on the roster makes the catch. And then Julius Lane, if you get uh, Julius rolling downhill, good luck making this tackle. And nobody can. 48 yards for the touchdown. Yeah, what a great job accelerating through the hole and then, you know, finishing the runoff and taking it to the to the end zone. So 41 to 12, that's where we were after the third quarter. And, Coach, you get the football with ten and a half minutes left in the fourth quarter, and you run out the clock. You run out the entire ten and a half minutes, and a lot of that's uh, with the depth of your offense uh, out there. You see Bo Cates at, uh, at the quarterback and Tyler Lopez at the running back spot. You run out ten and a half minutes on the clock. Yeah, that, that's that's a lot, obviously. Yeah. It just was able to keep the chains moving, and, um, you know, guys continued to do a good job up front. We just kept, um, you know, pushing the pile in this case. <laughs> Um, just uh, were able to run run it out. And uh, some of those guys that were going in on defense didn't get to go in, but, uh, you know, got a lot of chance to, to substitute some people in late in the game. Well, I think that was the tail of the tape, that last play there, is uh, your offensive line just continued to push. And, again, you ran out the final 10 and a half minutes to get the win, 41 to uh, 12 versus Coronado. You're 2-0 and on the year. That was fun. That was impressive. Some of your final takeaways from last Thursday night. Yeah, it just um, felt like we had improved. We yep. cleaned up a lot of stuff that we had messed up in the first game. Yep. And, uh, you know, we're able to – I think at this point in the year, that's what you're looking for. Right. And, and I think that's the key this week. We've yep. got to take another big step forward. And, um, you know, I feel like we'll, we'll go back to work and do that. And it's crazy to say here we are at homecoming uh, midway through the month of September on the backside of September. And your final non-district game, too, is – you, uh, you've gone to the 17 districts, so six district games. This is kind of your final tune-up before district play coming up. Yeah, no question. You know, have a great opponent in Stephenville yeah. and um, homecoming, and it's a big week for us and one we take a lot of pride in. And, um, you know, like you say, it is the, the last game before district and, um, you know, looking forward to, to some more improvement. And it'll be a fun one on uh, Friday night as uh, Stephenville and Wiley will take the field, two undefeated teams at the Hue on Friday. We'll start uh, diving into that one. We'll look at the other sports as well. Well, uh, a lot of success going on around Wiley these days as well. So we'll take our first time out, and uh, we'll be back to uh, wrap up the show. Stay with us. Taylor Electric Cooperative is your local connection for quality, affordable electric and fiber internet services. Located in the big country for over 80 years, we are proud to call this area home and to provide reliable services to our members and community. Providing personalized care at one local number, we know our members and the communities we serve. At Taylor Electric Cooperative, our dedication and care for our members is our cooperative difference. Thank you for your membership, and as always, we will be here keeping the lights on and powering the community. Life's hectic, and we get it. 
But let's talk about something you can't afford to skip. We're ready for you. Your smile. At Borland Sobin & Partners, we get that your time is precious. That's why we offer same-day appointments, so you don't have to put your smile on the back burner. Our team of expert dentists combines cutting-edge technology with a passion for perfection. Thank you for calling. This is 417. How can I help you? Book your appointment. We'll see you soon. When it comes to finding the right vehicle for you, there's no better place than Lawrence Hall in Abilene. For over 34 years, Lawrence Hall in Abilene has been the place to find the best from Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC. And that is still true today. Great products and great service, too. So the next time you need a new car, truck, or SUV, come see us or shop 24-7 at LawrenceHallAbilene.com. Voted Abilene's best new car dealer for over 28 years by you, our customers. Yeah, welcome you back in here to the Wiley Bulldog Sports Zone. We're talking Wiley Bulldog Athletics here over the course of the next 30 minutes. We do need to say a special thanks to all of our great sponsors of the Wiley Bulldog Sports Zone. Of course, Taylor Electric Cooperative, neighbors working for neighbors, our friends at Taylor Electric Cooperative. Borland, Sylvan & Partners Dentistry, cosmetic and family dentistry with the best care possible. You can find them online at bspdentistry.com. Lawrence Hall Chevrolet voted the best new car dealer in Abilene for more than 20 years. That's Lawrence Hall Chevrolet and the Shed Market at 7825 Buffalo Gap Road. Byron and Stacy Stevenson are great friends over at the Shed Market. Also, Abilene Glass and Mirror. They support our Abilene Glass and Mirror players of the game. That's what it was this week, Coach. We thought your running backs played so well. Uh, your three guys in the backfield, Jaden Lucero, Jagan Smith, Julius Lane, all had 70 uh, plus yards rushing last week. We kind of gave it a, a combination, players of the week, our Abilene Glass and Mirror players of the week. We thought your three running backs were great last week. Yeah, I did a great job. Uh, yeah. All three of them ran with, with great effort and are very unselfish and, um, you know, just have done a great job so far this year. Yeah, Julius in the end zone twice the other night, one from 48 yards out. Jagan in the end zone uh, as well. So all three of those guys uh, with three combined touchdowns and over 200 yards of rushing between the three. Again, uh, Jaden Lucero, Jagan Smith, and Julius Lane are Abilene Glass and Mirror players of the game. Since 1946, Abilene Glass and Mirror has been Abilene's preferred glass and mirror shop. You can sh I'm sure you can find what you're looking for there. You can visit them online at abileneglass.com. Also want to look in at our other other sports uh, just real fast uh, coach volleyball is on the road this week they start uh, district play on friday september the 27th versus abilene cooper so they're closing in on district play tennis is in district play some big matches this week abilene cooper on tuesday and then they travel to wichita falls memorial this weekend so best of luck to uh, coach cherry and company on the tennis courts cross country has this week off uh, boys golf does have a tournament this week they are in glen rose at the dinosaur classic on friday and saturday they come up with some unique uh, tournament names. <laughs> I guess, you know, Glen Rose, I guess they have the dinosaur track. So the dinosaur classic over in Glen Rose. Yeah, I guess um, <laughs> I guess so. Hope nobody hits one in one of those footprints. They? Yeah. Maybe yeah. bad. Yeah, you better not go out of bounds on that course. You never know what could happen. But uh, with all that said, let's talk some Bulldog football. It's homecoming 2024, and it's going to be a good one. Uh, Friday night at Hugh Sandifer Stadium as uh, the Bulldogs and the Stephenville Yellow Jackets will be on the field. Stephenville comes in at 3-0. and Of course, the Bulldogs are at uh, two and zero on the uh, young season. This has been a great, uh, great game over the course of the last few years. Wiley, the better of Stephenville last year, and uh, this year sets up to be another great one as well. Yeah, no question. I think too, um, you know, teams with a lot of tradition. Yeah. Uh, well coached and uh, you know they do a great job over there and will play with great effort and, you know makes for a good game no no doubt about that and it's your last tune-up uh, non-district wise before uh, district play gets rolling the next uh, the next week and uh, you know some some coaches I think stay away from games like this because the competition is so good but I know there's so much uh, that you're going to find out about your team when you get a quality opponent on the other side yeah I think we've always looked at it that way you know yeah. wanted to play quality opponents and uh, teams that played the right way and um, you know, you do. You learn a lot about your team, and yep. um, you know, and just going up against guys that are that are quality opponents help you no matter what. Let's talk Wiley Bulldogs a little bit. We talked about it in the first segment, but a little bit more. What you've liked uh, as you've progressed, you know, week one to week two. You 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 don't.
don't get the game versus Brownwood, but you finally get on the field versus Monterey, and now you've got uh, two weeks of data on your team, uh, you know, against opponents. What you've really liked in the progression of your team? Uh, I think our, our guys have played with great effort. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think we've, we've still got a little ways to go yeah. on just um, – uh, it's cleaning some things up, but yep. you know, really like uh, the effort that we're playing with, the, the intelligence, and the the way in which they've they've accepted game plans and and gone and run yep. with it, and so. You know, I think um, I think we have the opportunity to just keep getting better. No, no doubt about that. Uh, break down Stephenville for us a little bit, X's and O's wise. Uh, I know they're a team that likes to stretch the field offensively. They'll play solid defense. Uh, what have you seen? You know, watching you've watched a little bit more film than I have the last uh, last few days. What have you seen about the Stephenville team? Yeah, you know, they're they're just very well coached, extremely yeah. explosive offensively. Um, you know, are, are good up front, but also have some great skill guys. Yeah. And you know, defensively, they're always going to fly around right. to the football and. Uh, you know they they they're gonna make you um, beat them, and they're yep. gonna play very aggressive and physical football game. And um, you know that's just something that I think is is gonna be a great test for us, and something we're looking forward to. And you've got a whole week of preparation as you get uh, get ready here, and of course uh, the the game coming up on Friday. What are some things uh, that uh, you look for this week in preparation, and then uh, obviously some keys to victory on on Friday night for you? Yeah, I think Christmas of, of practice practice, and yeah. um, you know not only we've already gotten started game plan install but you know these next couple of days are huge and, yep. and kind of progressing from there and yep. uh, you know and then I think keys to victory are, are going to be those fundamental things we've yep. got to tackle well there's yep. no question about it and, um, you know and how well we can control the line of scrimmage and uh, is will play huge roles in the game you're a homecoming fan it's homecoming 2024 you like this week uh, I mean I think it's something we've taken great pride in for sure. a long time uh, you know here and I think we play well at homecoming coming and sure. um, you know there's a lot it's a lot to it throughout the course of the week but um, pretty special for, yep. for for our community and something we look forward to each year. Well, it'll be a special place on uh, Fridays. We'll all be here at uh, Hugh Sanford Stadium for homecoming 2024 kickoff at uh, 7 o'clock, the Bulldogs and the Yellow Jackets. Coach, good luck. Appreciate the time, and uh, we'll talk to you down the road. Thank you. All right. We'll have the game again on uh, Friday, 7 o'clock here at Hugh Sanford Stadium. We'll have it on uh, Wiley Bulldog Athletics on YouTube. We'll have the broadcast there and on the radio at 106.3, but we need you here in the stands as well, rooting on the Bulldogs. Need a packed house here for a homecoming 2024. We'll talk to you on Friday. Until then, we say good luck to the Bulldogs. Have a great week and uh, best of luck in uh, everything. Enjoy homecoming 2024 as well. For the head coach, Clay Martin, I'm Andy Penny. We'll talk to you on Friday night. Till then, take care. Go Bulldogs. So long, everybody. When it comes to finding the right vehicle for you, there's no better place than Lawrence Hall in Abilene. For over 34 years, Lawrence Hall in Abilene has been the place to find the best from Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC. And that is still true today. Great products and great service, too. So the next time you need a new car, truck, or SUV, come see us or shop 24-7 at LawrenceHallAbilenOnline.com. Voted Abilene's best new car dealer for over 28 years by you, our customers. Life's hectic, and we get it. But let's talk about something you can't afford to skip. We're ready for you. Your smile. At Orland Sobin & Partners, we get that your time is precious. That's why we offer same-day appointments, so you don't have to put your smile on the back burner. Our team of expert dentists combines cutting-edge technology with a passion for perfection. Thank you for calling. This is Orland Sobin. How can I help you? Book your appointment. We'll see you soon. Taylor Electric Cooperative is your local connection for quality, affordable electric and fiber internet services. Located in the big country for over 80 years, we are proud to call this area home and to provide reliable services to our members and community. Providing personalized care at one local number, we know our members and the communities we serve. At Taylor Electric Cooperative, our dedication and care for our members is our cooperative difference. Thank you for your membership, and as always, we will be here keeping the lights on and powering the community.